Met Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. It is a wonderful thing to be with you today and to offer a few words on this Ascension Day on our scriptures uh, and to be with those who are being confirmed and received in the sponsors uh, what a, just a lovely day to be here, <laughs> despite the hail and rain and storms, which evidently bishops seem to bring with them on a regular basis. So um, I told, uh, I told uh, can't remember who it was, but I said, we ought to just buy a house here, and then that way I'd be here all the time, you wouldn't get any storms. <laughs> uh, I want to focus in on this passage uh, from... Uh, the collect today. Uh, while we're going to talk about the gospel and the lessons that are before us, I was really captured this week in my prayers as I thought about this scripture with these, these words that help us with what's happening, what we're remembering in this ascension day. Christ ascended far above all heavens that he might fill all things, that he might fill all things. Now, if you are a student of the scripture, what you may know is that vessels uh, and their filling are important emblems, symbols of the life of the faithful people of both Testaments. The Abrahamic tradition and this idea of these vessels is important. You might think, for instance, those of you who are familiar maybe with Indiana Jones and not so much the scripture, the tabernacle, right? Remember from the first movie. Now, the tabernacle actually is in the scripture, uh, despite uh, the, all that other business. But that's a great example of a vessel that the, the people of Abraham believe is filled with God's spirit. And they take it before them, with them everywhere, right? So it's a great example. Another one is uh, uh, vessels to be filled. And the first vessel to be filled is actually the love of Jacob, who is later named Israel, uh, with his wife, Rachel, where they meet at a well where she has come to draw water, right? She's come to fill her vessel. And what we know is that this life and this relationship will be the fulfillment of the Abrahamic promise uh, to fill the world with people to bless God, because that is one of the key ingredients, the key courses of the scripture from the very beginning, which is to go out and to multiply, multiply God's peace, God's shalom in the world. So to take that vessel filled with love and blessing and be a people that goes out and multiplies God's peace, love, shalom, kinship in the world. This is an important image because when you eventually get to the Gospels and you read about the Samaritan woman, she's come to draw water from a well and she encounters Jesus. And there as she encounters Jesus, they have a conversation. And she realizes that what she really seeks is not water to do the dishes, to quench her thirst, but rather living water, who she discovers in Jesus. Then we might remember that story of the potter's hands from the New Testament and the image of God that is crafting us as vessels. So I want to know, how are you today? Right? How is that vessel doing? Right? Like you, like we are bodies and minds and spirit, like we are vessels, like physical vessels. Sometimes I think we get all spiritual about it. Let's just talk about the vessel. Was it a good week? Was it a hard week? Is your vessel full with joy? Because you're here today and we're giving thanks for all these folks who are being uh, confirmed and received. Maybe your heart is full and the vessel's tired. Right, like that, because that's a thing. But we get, right, so we have to name the fact that as we come in here, our vessel may be empty, it may be full, 
That vessel that comes in here with us, uh, though oftentimes we try to put everything aside, does bring into the church and into the community all the last week, right? Sometimes it brings in some tears, right? Some salty tea. Sometimes it brings in pain. Sometimes it brings in pain that hasn't been healed for a long time. Who knows? There isn't one person here, young or old, who doesn't come in this morning carrying something. Right? And we have this promise that God will fill all things. Now, if we open up the Scripture, all things. God will fill all things with God's love, with God's mercy, with God's forgiveness, with a healing balm. God will pour God's self out. That is a, that's a scriptural term that we hear over and over again. God will fill the vessel, whether it needs to be emptied first and washed out, right? Or it just needs to be topped off. Because God is interested in our vessels, not just carrying what they can in our human form, but that they runneth over like a cup. Right? That they run over. That somehow when we come in here to pray, to, to praise God for what God has done, to lay our lives on our, our weekly basis, and we just come in with who we are and what we are and what we got. And we just bring those vessels right up front. And we offer them the good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful. The sweetness of life lived. The gratitude of those things we did not expect but came forward this week for us. And we offer them. It looks like a little bit in a plate, and it's got some bread, kind of, and some <laughs> wine, right? But that's a symbol of all those vessels, that we bring them up in vessels. And we bring them to this table, and we offer them to God, and we even say in our Eucharistic prayer, these are your gifts that have been given to us that we return to you, right? These are vessels, and we bring them all up here. It's a symbol of what we're actually doing in the whole service. <coughs> was coming in so that God may fill all things. So that we may receive a blessing from God. And so that we may bless other people. Because the truth is sometimes out there in the world when we get out there, uh, what, we, what we realize is, uh-oh, that vessel lasted about 24 hours and I don't have enough to make it through the other six days of the week. Right? That's a good moment just to pause and ask God to fill you again with God's goodness, love. Pause. You can fill it up out there on your own or with others. Call somebody. Today we're going to promise to support each other in our lives in Christ. Call one of your friends here and say, man, my vessel's empty. And Shell's not going to fill it up. I need you. Remind me of God's love. Remind me of God's promise of forgiveness and mercy. That's what we're to do. We come in here and we fill ourselves up. God just blesses us and pours it out all, all, all over us like that rain this morning. All over. Sometimes it's going to come like hell. Not H-E-L-L. -L. <laughs> right? And it's, it, it may like cause you to stop under a bridge or something. Right? I mean, sometimes God's love causes you just to stop. This is so good. And we say it, but we, I want you to live it. I know of your faith. As Paul, Paul says, I know of your faith. Oh man, fill it up today and take it out all week long and call on each other when you need it. Now I'm gonna, uh, I want to end with this. I 
Um, uh, my daughter is up at Austin College in Sherman, Texas. She sings in a couple of choirs and things. And um, she uh, was singing last night, so I got to listen to her. Uh, but they sang a song, and this song, uh, one of the things they do in the acapella choir is gospel music. And this, uh, this little, I'm just going to share a little bit of it. But this song was written by a student for her senior project. And it was, I mean, you would have thought it was from the 1920s. I mean, it was just, I mean, my, I talk about being filled up in an unexpected place and being so grateful. I mean, I would have stood up and said amen, but my oldest daughter was sitting next to me, and that would not have probably gone well. But <laughs> I'm just telling you, I was filled up in that moment. And here's the a, here's a second verse. I'm going to get to the kingdom. I'm going to get to the kingdom. Sometimes the way gets longer day by day. So long that you could say, I've lost my way. When I get down on my knees and pray, the Lord is going to help me find my kingdom way. Sometimes when you pray all week long and wonder how you're going to end that sermon. <laughs> you know, 20 kids get up and sing it right into your face. Right? Oh my gosh. What a glorious church we have. What a glorious God we have. To be filled and for you and I to take, come and, and watch these folks be confirmed and received reaffirmed to actually see us praying for God's spirit I will pray for you daily as I do for every church and every priest in this diocese that your vessels may run over run over such that you will build the expansion of this building and you will have to put people in the yard because people are going to, on a clear day. <laughs> but people will know something's happening there. Those people are filled with love and mercy. Something's happening. Because their vessels run over with God's blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.